And so what, so what was, I mean, I don't know, can you sort of sum up what was happening in the world of theater then? That there, it sounds like there was like a point of transition, that new plays are... Yeah, something happened in 56. What happened? Well, there was the Suez War, which was ridiculous. Mm. Big demonstrations and all that. Beckett's play God, who had been done some years earlier, uh, with, what, with a lot of success, and he got super rich. So a lot of playwrights thought we could write something that was worth writing and make money. And then there's a political disturbance. And then the, the socialist government had promised, that they'd be, promised us there'd be no more slums and stuff. Mm. But then the conservatives took over. A bunch of rich assholes, basically, against the poor. Well, you can see it now in America. They want the poor to die because they're a nuisance. So, so we went from a socialist dream world to a conservative reality, and it stirred everything up. So round about the mid-50s, everything was shifting, and it didn't really reveal itself until the 60s. Oh, and all the West Indians arrived with lots of pot plants like that one over there. Yes, go on. Yeah, well, <laughs> so pot arrived. Pot arrived yeah, in London. That was right. And theatre got interesting. <laughs> yeah, that was a help. Uh-huh. And people who would have been stupid drunks before tended to go to pot quite a lot of them. Hmm. And that doesn't have the same terrible effects alcohol does. Mm -hmm. But it's a Christian culture, so they like alcohol here. Yeah. Yeah. So you're reading plays. The modern plays are there. Yeah. Beckett used to send his plays personally to me because because he was told I understood him. So I yeah, I want I've I I, I don't know the story of how you met Beckett. Actually, I'll get out of order here. Okay. Uh. Yeah, Roger Bland, who did Beckett's second play in France. It was called Oh God, um, I can't remember anything anymore. End Game. Fand uh, something or other. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, oh yes, God. And we brought the French production to London for I think maybe one to two performances. And the cast and John Osborne and Colin Wilson and me and Beckett and George Devine ran the theatre were in this ghastly smoke filled room in Devine's house. And I sat by Beckett, who sat all the time with his hands like that, and mostly with his head down, and didn't say much. And I kept throwing up, and at the time I thought I was allergic to alcohol, but it was the smoke. But I wasn't going to leave and go home, because I once, maybe Beckett would say something. Mm -hmm. But he never did. <laughs> he just sat there, sort of between the French and the English. I think because he... It had to be there. Right. It's like it was a social obligation, but he didn't have the chat. And then as we left and as I was leaving in the hall, he said, will you have lunch with me tomorrow? Which freaked him out. No kidding. So then he used to invite me to lunch. Okay. He didn't like eating alone. So what's lunch like, like with Beckett? Oh, long silences. That's why he liked having me to lunch. I mean... Because you would stay silent? Of course. With him? Yeah. No, I, I would argue, the first time I argued with him, and you, it was fairly clear you can't change anything in his world. Nothing. Okay. I mean... What did you argue with him about, do you remember? Yeah, I told him he was not, well, he was, uh, I didn't like the way he was going. I thought somehow, yeah, he started off with interesting, well, like novels, like, the first novel starts off with somebody masturbating a wheelchair. Mm -hmm. That's quite nice. Um, I forget what it was called. And then his writing got more and more obscure and no paragraphs. It's hellish to read. Like what? I don't think I've met them. Uh, but, but I do like what. Okay. Right, but it's a hell of a difficult thing to read the damn thing. Uh, and so you brought that up with him over lunch, that you, you didn't like the way the, that his writing I was going? I think he was a friend of Giacometti, and Giacometti was into minimalism. Okay. Also, Beckett was just determined not to be misunderstood again. 
he was shocked to find clergymen writing about the religious message in Godot. Oh, what was his intention then with Godot? Well, it wasn't, it wasn't to give a Christian message. <laughs> it was about the failure. The idea of the saviour was laughable in Godot. But some Christian guy. At Lenda, there was a theatre of boredom, which people wrote articles about because they saw bad productions of Godot. Oh, I've seen some bad productions oh, of Godot. <laughs> my son, my six-year-old son, saw the first act of Godot when I did it and never forgot it. <laughs> I really liked it. I think twice a little boy said, when's Godot coming? <laughs> but he liked it. What did, he, what did he like about it? He was well directed. Yeah, <laughs> well, I, I've never, I, I have, yeah. have always been out of town. I, I, know. I know of two times that you've done Godot. Yeah, but, but you know the. But I've heard that your Godot is incredibly funny. And then. And sad, but funny. And then sad, and sad. Yeah. And then I think, and then I get confused when I see other Godots because I, I laugh a little bit. Well, but then, not very then much. he was 10 years old and he'd never forgotten it. So I took him to one done by guys in San Quentin and we couldn't get out. We were jammed into this rows of people. We had to, two and a half hours before there was an interval. Mm. Ah, and the whole thing was going to go on for four. And a, it was by San Quentin prisoners. Doing Waiting for Gatto. They would walk. They would stop. They would look at the audience. <laughs> they would wait. They would say a miserable line miserably. Then they'd walk somewhere else and stop. Oh, it was awful. Mm. So poor Ben, <laughs> when it's the play he always remembered, gets so, taken to this nightmare torture. Uh -huh. <laughs> I think it got good reviews. <laughs> from, from, prisoners from San Quentin did it. I guess after they were released. There was a Godo in Norway. Yeah. And after Act One, it stopped. That was it? It was done by prisoners. Oh. And they all escaped. There was no act two. I think that's true. I hope so. I'm going to Google that now. Yes. I hope that's true. I bet it's true. Uh huh. So. So someone, someone, some Christian person wrote, a, said they found hidden meaning in Godot. All kind, and Beckett hated that. Beckett was into a hate journalist thing. Because they would ask him fool questions like, what does Godot mean? And they would ask him that. Mm -hmm. Well, they wouldn't invite them to lunch. <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to ask him those questions. Well, I'm, so I'm still curious about, so what happened then when you said to Gato, I don't like the way, or sorry, not Gato, oh, well, to Beckett, After, Beckett, after that, said, I didn't argue with him again. Ah. It was pointless. There was a time when he was, I had an adaptation of a Greek play on at the, it wasn't the National Theatre, it was Olivier's Old Vic Theatre. It's called, it became, I think it became, yeah, it became, I don't know, it was some relation to the National Theatre. And Olivier was afraid of Beckett. <laughs> and Olivier, Beckett was doing a thing called play, directing it himself. And they were talking so fast that no one could understand the dialogue. Well, he knows the dialogue, so he can understand it. And Billy Whitelaw and Bob Stevens and somebody else all sitting in vases, just their heads sticking out. <laughs> We're desperately learning it so that, that they could say it at the pace he demanded. And Olivier said, this is impossible. <laughs> Got Gaskell to talk to Beckett, but Gaskell didn't know Beckett, so he got me to come along as, to talk to him. And that was another time he tried to persuade Beckett of something. <laughs> Did it work? You don't have a baby, do you? Me? No. no. I don't have a baby. But if you saw your baby being dipped into molten lava, you'd protest, wouldn't you? Probably. You wouldn't like it. I wouldn't like but it. Becky was a bit like that. Uh -huh. Nothing could be changed. Uh -huh. And he, I, you know, it was very worrying for him because I'm saying, you know the text and you, can, you can't judge because you know the text. Mm -hmm. That's and he's a fair torn. point. I know, he's, he can see it's a fair point, but he can only rely on himself. Like he's a person who only knows when it's right for him. Yeah. So, so that was the last time anyone really tried to argue with him. <laughs>